Okay, so first and foremost, a very um, happy new year to all. Trading into 2018, we are seeing quite good performance for those who have entered the market at the start of 2017 and you're seeing that 20% returns on many of the equity markets, I think. Of course, some of the trades from the start of 2017 didn't really play out as how we have expected to. I think start of the year we're certainly expecting quite a bit of um, dollar strength and of course we all know how that has turned out. So moving to 2018, we are getting, oh my gosh, obviously I'm still stuck in 2017 looking at the slides um, here. So but really move, moving into 2018, we're seeing quite a bit of continuity for many of the uh, markets especially the equity markets and also a lot of the dollar teams remain the same. So we are going to look at some of this market and hopefully provide some ideas for you for this month. So to start with, once again, of course, we are going to go through the disclaimer. So once again, the information prepared here is intended for general circulation. It does not take into account your specific investment objectives, financial situation or particular needs. So do have a look at this disclaimer and we'll just continue in a minute. Okay, so once again, thanks all for attending the first webinar of the year. Um, we will continue with that theme of really focusing on some of the key ideas that you that we could see for the month ahead but also just to let everyone know before I start as well that I'm going to commence on a more regular webinar uh, short ones in the morning on Mondays and Fridays at nine o'clock and really I think a lot of these things that I'm going to surface to you right now is really broad themes for the um, for the month but however having said that um, we will have I, the, the more frequent webinars themselves will focus a lot more on just really the intra-day uh, action and also into the end of the, um, the, the, the week itself. We are going to have a little bit of preview into what's to come in the week. So I think that might be something really useful for those trading on a really short term. But this itself is going to look at what the market action is today and also on the longer term as well. So um, moving forward from here. A quick recap of the December um, events that we have seen. So these are the set of events that we have shown you last month and of course really just to highlight the fact that in the latest Fed FOMC meeting I think we did see the dollar index for dollar strength, a dollar actually losing quite a bit of the strength. There was the expectation for Fed members to really hasten the pace for their Fed rate, um, interest rate lift, lift of particularly taking into account the fact that we are, have tax cuts um, expectations and that could have a positive effect on growth but instead it was kept status quo with three hikes seen for 2018. So the concern um, itself, over, the, the disappointment over there really did see that dollar come off. I think a lot of this concern over inflation is really going to be ongoing theme into 2018. I will touch on that a little bit as well for later. Um, we did see towards the end of the month President Donald Trump in the US finally signed the tax reform bill right before Christmas and there was a lack of any apparent reaction but really that's to be expected given how the market has seen that um, um, voting through the Senate, through the House through, and that is already has had the expectations built into the market already. And moving on to January events, of course, right now we are the second week of January already. And um, since the New Year's Day, if you have been in the market as well, uh, we have personally seen quite good returns for the markets. Um, S&P 500 had that six consecutive session of gains and up to the Tuesday's US session. Of course, last night we did see it actually coming off a little bit, but really the market is supporting any dips over there this, despite the, the temporary breather of sorts. So Friday we have the US CPI to look forward to, Bank of Canada, Bank of Japan meeting. Some bits of this concern um, over the NAFTA um, negotiations as well. We've seen the CAT itself actually dropping again losing strength against the US dollar after Reuters reported that a Canadian government official believed that 
President Donald Trump will pull the U.S. out of NAFTA in the very near future. I think there was some news to dispel this belief by another official as well. But having said that, for those trading dollar cat, certainly want to keep on your radar. Seven rounds of talks have also been planned in February. I'm going to see how this actually pan out. ECB meeting, U.S. Q4 GDP, the first reading will be out as well. We saw the Atlanta Fed watch um, to actually show a little bit of moderation in GDP expectations. So it will be quite interesting to see whether the Q4 GDP can really match up to the expectation of about 3% currently. And of course, to end of the month, we have the Fed meeting once again. So this is just an overview. Um, also, one thing to touch, really, um, this is something that we're going to go through today. U.S. earnings going to touch on this. I think the market is seeing quite a lot of excitement over U.S. earnings for the final quarter of 2017. And we have this um, really quite extensive number of companies reporting their earnings. And of course, beginning with financial companies, banks, this Friday U.S. session will be after Singapore market closed. But those looking at U.S. markets will be quite interesting. And I'm just going to delve into specific sectors as well. And really, anytime you have any questions, please um, just shout them out to me and I will try my best to provide some views for you with regards to that. So, yeah, any questions, you can find it somewhat. I, I think there's a button on the, on the, yeah, on the phone, on your phone or the computer that you're looking at. So moving on as well, this just to let you know, you can head on to the IG website to um, have a quick glance at some of the out of our shares that you can trade. And it's really put up very nicely in this table with the EPS results itself out as well. So um, just to point this out to you, you can go to this website over here. And of course, not to forget our local Singapore market is going to find the set of earnings results as well. These are the companies on the Straits Times Index. We're beginning with SPH this Friday, which is tomorrow. I think we've seen a bit of short interest for this particular stock moving um, of late. And we're really keen to see how the performance itself might pan out. It's not a very huge component per se on the market, but really um, for those holding that something to look out to and of course many others um, including capital land one of our the one of our re, um, real estate stocks that we're really looking at as well and for more you can head on to the IG economic calendar and head on to the earnings section so just want to highlight this so Recapping on the action from December, and this is taken as of 26 December, of course, into the end of the year, we saw a little bit more selling as well in um, some of the equities markets not captured here. But I guess my main point really is that we've seen quite good um, upturn at the start given the expectations over the tax reform bill, of course, for the Asian markets, there was a bit of profit taking. Um, that's quite strong, strongly seen in WTI futures actually dipped in the early part. But of course, we all know how that's panned out now and we'll delve into that further. So three themes for January, I'm just going to highlight to you today, including first and foremost, indices to watch. I'll go on to the S&P 500, touch on some of the sectors, give you a look at the Dow Jones and of course many um, folks also are interested in the streets, the local Singapore market and in this case the Singapore index which is the related market for the Straits Times index that, with IG. And then we'll go on to the US dollar trajectory. I think it's quite interesting especially what we have seen this year, this, this week in particular and some of the commodities including oil tech because as well. So indices to watch, we will start with the US 500, um, the related market for S&P 500. So we can see that somewhere through to late November, there was the pickup in terms of the trends in for the US um, the S&P 500 index. And in this case, we have seen it accelerate quite um, strongly through to the 2,750 levels of late. Um, the market itself, of course, if you look at the RSI, is in overbought territory, but I think few have been looking towards that. MACD itself is still showing quite a strong up trend and of course we know that there are quite a number of factors to watch for this market moving into the new year after the January effect really saw it touching the um, upper 
resistant up uptrend resistance and um, stalling a little bit right now but I think that it really is reacting to that trend line rather than um, the market itself really having any significant changes and of course we know that um, for Q4 2017 earnings, I think the market is currently looking at about 10.5% gains um, projection as a 10.5% earnings growth projection as according to fact set and it's reported by all 11 sectors are expected to see growth in the quarter and that's been led by the energy sector. I think that's really one of the reasons why we're seeing it uh, propel itself rather strongly. So for this month, I think what we are going to look out for and the factors, I think they definitely are one. I hope that if you are trading this market, really a very interesting one. I mean, of course, the Dow itself is showing similar strong trends, but for the S&P 500, these are the factors that will likely affect it. And of course, for the Dow as well. So first and foremost, US CPI is going to be out this Friday, another quick update into the US inflation situation. We have seen quite a bit of concerns coming through from Fed members since the start of this week, including Fed, um, San Francisco Fed Williams and Fed Bostic, both voters this year actually um, a little bit concerned over how inflation might affect. December's market consensus has as I've mentioned earlier, it's currently seen at 0.1% month-on-month against 0.4% seen for the month of November and really any surprise on the upside here, which could be possible given the fact that we've seen average hourly earnings in the latest release um, showing uptrend and also commodity prices actually picking up in the month of December. So certainly keen to see whether US CPI might trend um, higher than what that market is expecting and that itself may create a little bit of uh, expectation for Fed hikes and thereby weighing upon the market. But having said that, we do know that the key and really most important factor moving into the end of this week is the commencement of US Q4 earnings and this will begin with US bank earnings including JP Morgan, Wells Fargo and also BlackRock as some of those reporting. So certainly wants to look out for, um, I'll delve into that a little bit more in just a few moments. And Q4 GDP as well that's going to be due on the 26th of January. Um, the As I mentioned earlier, the Atlanta Fed itself has seen a little bit of moderation. So we really want to see whether Q4 GDP could come in at that 3% mark that the market is expecting. And I think that should that continue to be the case in any upside surprises, the S&P 500 will be the first to fill it as well. And also, of course, Central Bank Watch, the 4th Gen Fed Minutes was out. Um, I think there was a rather mixed view with regards to it. But into the end of this month, we have the Fed meeting as well. Any rhetoric from the Fed wants to follow. So a quick recap of how the S&P 500's Q3 earnings performance had actually panned out in the previous season. If you look at how the securities in general have performed, earnings is pretty much strong. Um, so more than 75% of the companies actually surprised on the upside as compared to the consensus. And uh, spreading across this performance, you can see that generally well, IT had been the one to really have earning results to shout for once again and leading the earning surprise. But there's also laggards as well with the telecoms and utilities. And certainly these are the ones that I will really be concerned with if you're trading sector specific ETFs or stocks. Um, these are the ones that could really retain its um, lag given the fact that we have a um, little bit of concern over use as well moving forward. but. Just a quick recap of the earnings that has that we are seeing. And then there comes the time where I've mentioned the IT stocks. And this is really one one other well one other quarter that I really want to point out IT stocks outperformance. So this is once again from fact that actually if you do look at some of this report that they have shown us. For Q4 2017, there's expectations um the guidance from the companies for earnings per share have actually really outshined their five-year average once again. And I think in this sense, it's actually quite a strong signal in terms of what to expect for the IT shares. And looking at 
if you really want to trade this sector specific movements, you just look at the technology sector ETF. Um, sorry, this should be XLK ETF. So if you go onto the IG um IG um website, you can type in SPDR technology sector ETF, and in this case the technology sector within S&P 500 index really is showing quite a bit of this uptrend. Uh, recent sessions itself, you can see that it's poked a, their, its head a little bit above into the overbought territory. We've seen it pulling back into this beautiful up trend channel and if you really want to exercise your Dow theory here you can see that the higher highs has really been in the case as well. I think there could be some concern that sets in for the tech sector given that bond yields have been rising rather steeply last night we have seen the 10 year treasury yields really eyeing the 2.6% mark that could erode some of the gains for the sector in the longer term but for the near term of course we do see that this is one that is space worth watching especially um, given the earnings expectations and a lot of the earnings is expected to come in into the end of the month as well. So here comes another one that I would like to really highlight to the market. I think the financial sector is one that continue to receive quite a bit of interest and you can see that it's been showing this rather strong trend breaking above the $28.25 um, horizontal resistance as we stepped into the new year. Um, if you just have a look at the chart here, even the uptrend resistance here is seeing a little bit of this breaking and I think that itself is quite spectacular. In this current upcoming um, season, we are finding that the uh, market is expecting approximately 11% earning growth, earnings growth for the sector, really matching that for the S&P 500 index as a whole. And I think the icing on the cake so far is the fact that yields have also been rising and that's been doing the sector some good of late, helping it to see up. So I think that this is really one of the um, stock to really be one of the ETFs that we really can be bullish upon this sector and on IG right now it's been traded as a share so we do keep a lookout for this as well and given the fact that we have bank earnings coming up I do think that the uh, for and for those who will be keen to really capture any movements for the banking sector and um, specifically there is the KBE ETF, which is the S&P Banking ETF. You can see that the earnings coming up itself is helping to see it going up, including the use. And in this case, once again, pointing out the Dow theory, you can see the higher highs, the higher lows forming in this beautiful trend. I think um, with regards to the earnings report when it is out, I think the market itself will be keen to see um, how it's performing the, the, among the analysts, there is the expectation that there could be some sense of uncertainty with the tax reform plans coming out. So in the filing, Morgan Stanley has said that Q4 2017 earnings may fall by about $1.25 billion um, due to the fact that of due to the fact of tax reform. And why is this so? Because well, without trying to get too technical, a lot of these different tax assets with the changes here um, will be offset, will be, which can be offset against future um, tax bill are worth less due to some of the changes that the tax code recently signed by President Donald Trump um, is bringing to the market. So basically it just means that we might see some of this heat um, to some of the banks when they report their earnings for the upcoming season. Um, so with that having said, I mean, the, the fact is the market's reaction will be quite interesting and should we actually do see any pullback in terms of um, the prices itself, I would see that this is actually a time to really be more invested in this sector in particular because what is expected for these banks is that into the year of 2018, the, despite the early um, hit to Q4 2017, earnings, banks are expected to actually recoup these losses and see a positive impact overall from the tax change for the full year. So that's going to help um, the market up, especially this banking sector um, 
within the banking sector. So I would say that any pullback that you see right now, and as you can see that there is actually a horizontal support, a resistance turn support around $48.38 will be a good entry point for the market. And some of these ones, including JP Morgan, um, are the really ones to watch for amongst the big banks. So keep a lookout for this as we move into Friday's US session and the earnings are expected to be out then. Looking at the Dow Jones as well, I think it's worth making a quick mention that of course the momentum for this market is a lot more stronger. Um, you can see that the prices itself is following this uptrend and just look at the year-to-date gains for the Dow Jones through the sessions about 2.6%, pretty strong. Um, definitely want to see watch for the trend and of course the earnings report to come as well. JP Morgan part of this on Friday. So for those trading the Singapore index, what is there to watch out for? I think this is really worth a mention given the fact that we have the Singapore index um, that really is a related index for the Straits Times index. We've seen that momentum pick up. I think early part of the um, last year of being calling for the market to end around between 3,400 to 3,500 level it's since been the case but it's still showing a rather strong trend and since the start of this year it's really topped the 3,500 level as well but moving forward we do see the fact that it's 16 April um, sorry just a man here as well 16 April 2015 it's in the high of 3,549 spot 85 for the streets times index and we are certainly quite near that level at this moment and the market itself however do find that support for 3,500 as the market takes a breather so I think what really we want to watch for the market is how the uh, performance is going to be in primarily from external factors given how um, the earnings overseas really affects Singapore and also Singapore's straight times index in into trend um, February as well. We're going to get bank earnings in the middle of the month. Something we'll go more in depth next month during our Outlook webinar. But for this month, however, I think looking to US earnings and US markets performance will be the key item for the Singapore market. We have a couple of earnings um, as I've mentioned over here, but these are really, I wouldn't say think they are the key ones to sway the market. And looking at how Q3 earnings performance, we don't see too much of a strong trend given that makes returns cutting across the sectors as well. So if you have any questions, please do shout them out to me. Uh, we'll also quickly go through the US dollar trajectory next and then touch on um, com some commodities before we end the session for today. So any question, please shout them out to me. So moving on to the US dollar basket, which um, really when you look at the US dollar index um, in in the mainstream um, terminals, you can see that the prices itself have really fallen since the last round of market outlook webinar when I was holding it on the 14th of December. I think at that point of time, I would say that there was quite a bit of conviction for a rising US dollar. And that is due to the fact that tax reform will be passed by the um, U.S. administration. But instead, you can see that really the market, this, the stock market itself have really helped rally it on that. But for the U.S. dollar, um, I think the market really saw that as something that is taken as given and it proceeded on to sell the U.S. dollar instead. And of course, into um, the start of this year, we're seeing pressure as well in recent sessions. Of course, start of the week, we have some of the short covering for Euro USD that's been seeing the US dollar up. But at this moment, there's a lot of this selling in terms of US treasuries that's actually weighing upon the market as well. But really, has anything changed, which is the question that I really want to ask and I think that what we have right now is that US dollar previously expected to slip through the year. I think it's continuing to be the case. Um, we, we, as I mentioned, we suggested that Q1 may want 
we want to bring about upsides given the tax reform bid, but the market really didn't see that. So this is a chart that I've shown during the last webinar as of 13 December, as you can see over here. Um, it's really not moved too different for the US dollar index. And we can see that prices itself is really sinking. Um, currently, the market for the US dollar index is trading at around um, 92 spot 40 yeah, for those trading US dollar basket. So I think the key point that we have to bring is really that the market is quite convinced that we may not find the US dollar bouncing in any manner and even into the end of this week when we have the US CPI any upside surprises may still be ones that you can I um should we see any strength I would still be one interested to fade some of this strength. But having said this corporate repatriation flows remain one to watch moving into March and I think um despite so the US dollar is not really making too much of a re re return anytime soon. Um, why is this so as well? I think we should just really quickly talk about the Fed uh, target's performance so far. I think despite the fact that we have the core PC number tuning up slightly um, in the last release, it's really too still far from what the market is expecting. And the conviction itself, um, given the dot plot itself, you can see that the white, um, sorry, the purple line over here, you can see that it compared to the previous time, there's actually been a little bit of this pickup in terms of inflation expectations and send the OIS um, value up slightly. But nevertheless, for the market, really there's not too much of a conviction that we are going to see the Fed materially changes change their view. And of course, recent voters, including Fed's Bostick and Fed's Williams, have surprisingly gone, gone on the rather dovish side as well. And this is despite the fact that just in last November, we have seen San Francisco Fed Williams in his speech mention some, um, some content about how inflation is expected to pick up, but nevertheless, he's still on the rather cautious end at this moment. So certainly one to monitor. So against the fact that we are expecting the US dollar to decline, what are some of the areas to really look out for? I think Euro, US dollar remain one to look out for. So I think through 2017, the market has been expecting this pair to really soar. I don't think that that is going to change too much into 2018 as well. So looking at how the charts right now are showing us, you can see that the um, market has really once again attempted the 1.2 level by seeing sunk back a little bit and um, with regards to that look it does look like a double top formation but in the shorter term the Dow theory here certainly looks to be one that's holding well since November um, higher highs and high lows as well so I think that um, could really be one to look out for um, in terms of further upsides. I mean, longer term expectations is one that remains really bullish given that um, you, the ECB is still expected to adopt more hawkish tones into the year. We have ECB meeting coming up, so keep an eye on that. And of course, um, in terms of geopolitical tensions, I think Italian elections offering not too much jitters at this moment. German, Germany coalition still seeing hurdles, um, capping some of the upsides, but as it untangles, um, we're going to see how that pans out as well, but really on monetary policy, and I think that's supporting that long-term strength for Euro, US, dollar. So I'm just getting a little bit of uh, one question here, which I think I'll address that before we uh, move on to just talk a little bit of dollar yen as well. So um, Sam has actually asked this question. I really thanks for these questions. So he 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 did request to see if I can comment on the China's recent mention to reduce USD purchases and the effect on the US dollar. So what we have had yesterday, we saw quite a sh um, sharp dip in terms of the US dollar index and that itself is triggered by what uh, the Bloomberg's uh, breaking news of how the the China's growing value of buying U.S. treasuries. Um, I think my takeaway in terms of that piece of news is that um, I think that some of the, the reports that did run and say that China's buck may actually hurt more than their bite. I think that's really one of very good um, idiom to really describe the situation. So how that came about was really the fact that China's 
um, comment itself was expected to be one that's politically lined, especially given how um, the U.S. administration is looking at imposing tariffs on China in terms of steel and aluminum. That itself um, is creating a little bit of concern for China. And moreover, some of the intellectual property rights um, concerns have also been the ones that has triggered this kind of concerns. And given that China is really the U.S. biggest holder of their U.S. treasuries, and suddenly this is one that has actually rocked the market. But I think my take on the matter overall is the fact that this is really one that's politically lined. I think the Chinese may not really be able to find that they have much room to um, adopt any of this um, halting or slowing down of the U.S. Treasury's buying, particularly given the fact that that is really to a large part um, mm -hmm. what the Chinese used to um, well manage their currency. We know that when they do their fixing, a lot of this is of buying and selling of treasuries is what they have and to control that. And of course, should you really want to get rid of that U.S. Treasury, you wouldn't want to spook the market before you actually conduct that. So I do see that this is really the flexing of muscles by the Chinese um, with regards to the tax policy, con uh, sorry, trade policy concerns, um, rather than that, them actually wanting to outrightly conduct such a move. And that's really going to feel the, trigger the wrath of the US as well. So I would say that monitor the situation with regards to um, the trade policies, whether in terms of the tariffs or the intellectual property rights. Um, that may actually be ones to spook the market, but otherwise we will say that I would think that that itself is really just a one-time event that we have seen so far. So yeah, moving on as well. I think there's really quite a bit of concern with regards to what's happening in the treasury market right now and the bond movement, bond yield movements for the for the matter. So really follow the news on that. It's really one of the reasons that has been shaking quite a bit through both currencies and equity markets. So if you look at equities just yesterday as well, um, on the S&P 500, the worst performing sectors includes your utilities. Um, the telecoms and also the real estate sectors, tank, the, the ones that are really the ones affected that by use and how that you know erodes some of the attractiveness for these um these high dividend um count counters sectors I would say so um, keep a look on that. And for dollar yen, for the matter, I think that what we are seeing right now is that it's still finding good support. So, um, the early, you can see if you look at the candles over here earlier in the the, the week as well. Um, on Tuesday we have had the market itself slipping, and that's because the um Bank of Japan have actually cut reduced some of their long dated bond buying and what it means for the market is that there was a concern that this could be the Bank of Japan signaling the fact that they are going to taper earlier than what the market was expecting. I've also written a piece out on the IG website with regards to whether the Bank of Japan's inflation target is realistic. I think my my research at that point of time really just suggests the fact that the Bank of Japan may have their tense tight with regards to the monetary policy at this moment. I think that in the days ahead, we want to watch to see if there's any clarification because that spooking of the market itself did see quite a drastic move. And previously, when Bank of Japan Governor um, Haruhiko Kuroda actually did um, give the market some of this perception of easing. The clarification came through again in December during the Bank of Japan meeting, so we want to see whether there's some move. But since like at this moment we're finding rather good support for the dollar yen pair around 113 spot 135. So any of this reversal here will be keen to watch as well. And last but not least, we want to touch a little bit on commodities. I think it's really interesting given how the crude prices have um, soared through the roof so far. And I think a lot of the market has also seen the energy sector perform rather well. So really, this is um, one that relates both to sectors, including equities and currencies for those commodity currencies, um, and also, of course, the price itself. So what we have right now for U.S. crude is that the uptrend is intact 
you will recall in my previous webinar in December, I've mentioned that I'm expecting prices to actually moderate slightly moving into the new year, and that's because of the U.S. production increase. Um, in potentially increasing as the prices go up, that's going to bring up more rate count. I think what we have surprisingly is the fact that it's not been happening. I'm not saying that this won't happen moving on, but I think this really one to watch out for. And anytime that turn comes through, um, the current really overbought and by spec this market overbought by speculators, maybe one to um, form quite good short opportunity. But it's not. The, turn, the time yet, of course, we have good news coming through. The latest one from US um, EIA showed that the world oil demand in 2018 is expected to grow by another 100,000 barrels a day based on the latest figure. And also, of course, the US EIA report, the latest one showing that 4.9 million barrel um, reduction drawdown in terms of US inventories against the 3.75 that the market was expecting. So I think that's been pretty good news for the very short term because read counts last week has also actually declined as well. So certainly when we look at the market right now, I think there is um when I mean referring to this chart over here you can see that the orange line being the read count and the green lines are actually the commitment of trader positions and basically these are the speculators and how bought into the market are they the net long position uh, right now actually moderated a little bit so I think there's a little bit of caution setting into the market and it could very well mean a little bit of consolidation for prices in my opinion and whether when we do get uh, some of the read counts actually tuning up I think that's going to threaten the price performance here and therefore with any dip past the uptrend support you have in this moment I think it will be a good time to really um, keep this one on your radar and probably might be the ones to see the turn in terms of the sentiment so take a look at this market and keep it you know on your dashboard in my opinion so one last market that I just really want to talk about as well, and I think um, a lot of the market, um, a lot of the the market players are still very invested in, and that is cryptocurrencies. Um, I think that in once again, you know, I want to really highlight in terms of how we're able to value this is something that we certainly do not have, and I think this is one instead that trades very well to technical analysis and. Just bring out this chart over here. You can see that it's actually sinking a little bit into the wedge for Bitcoin US dollar. And I think that with regards to this, really it's about seeing where it's going to break out into. If you look at some of the lines that I've drawn out so far right now, in fact, it's actually um, actually broken past one of this uptrend support. So it's actually a little bit on the slide at this moment. A lot of these alternative coins, including Ethereum, are the ones that have been picking up as the market shift towards some of them instead. So looking at how Bitcoin might perform moving forward, I think these are the trend lines that I really recommend that you follow, including the horizontal support over here and also the downtrend support. Anytime it breaks up above, I think this might revive some of the um, price, the, the, spec, the trend trading that has been going on. But on the break below, I think really it's about seeing which end of the triangle that's going to come out through. So with that, um, we are really come to an end over here for today's webinar. I've not taken too long and see so have some time for questions. If you have them, um, just shout them out to me. And really, um, also, I just want to talk, uh, once again, mention the fact that you can follow me on Twitter over here, but also I've got more regular short, short quick bites of webinar coming up from next week onwards on Monday and Friday at about 9 o'clock. You can sign up for them on IG Academy. I'm just going to go through on Mondays um, or, or weekend actions and as well what's to expect for the week and Friday, some of the recap and also look ahead into the new week with live charts that I'll probably bring out to you um, depending on what interesting markets are trending at the moment as well so certainly if you have any questions yeah once again do share them with me right now but um, thanks so much for taking your time to listen to some of the um, things that I've really pointed out today and I certainly hope that you keep some of these ideas in um, your dashboard moving into this um, 
end of this month. So next session coming out on 1st February. So thanks all for coming today and yeah, tuning in with IG.